Hello and welcome to Super Citizen, the only conservative television show on the air in the entire state of Maryland. Thank you so much for tuning in. For once on TV, you might hear some truth and honesty. Tell your friends about Super Citizen Television. And now, enjoy the program. I'm Pat McDonald. I hope you've enjoyed Super Citizen TV. Right now, we are only on the air once a month. I'd like to be on every Sunday, broadcast every week. But frankly, to be honest with you, it takes money. And we need your support. You've seen during the entire show a phone number and a website, supercitizenusa.com. Go there. You can pay for the Super Citizen membership, which is only $20 a year. If you would like to invest more in the future and in conservatism and keeping America great, you can invest more. We have been picking up a lot, but, you know, like everybody else, during the virus, we were hurt. Our contributions were down and our advertisers were down. So now we're trying to come back, and we are. And we want to be on every week. So we need your help, we need your support, and we need, more importantly, besides the investment in the future, we need more importantly for you to become a super citizen. Because there's one thing about conservatives, it's always been a problem. They're not real organized. And the main mission of super citizen is to organize conservatives. That's why we bring you uh, on the TV, we introduce you to popular conservative elected officials and leaders and their viewpoints. You're not gonna get that anywhere else. So let's keep winning and let's keep moving forward and let's keep America great. And now let's try to save radical deep blue Maryland. I'm Pat McDonough. Thanks for tuning in. Join the club, the Super Citizen Club. Let your voice be heard across the state. For just $20 a year, you'll receive inside access to our social media network, direct delivery of our Super Citizen newsletter, and advance notice and discounts to our special events and more. Call 410-238-0025. Join the club, the Super Citizen Club, today. Let's take an honest look at defunding the police. The Destroy America crowd always comes up with a wacky, destructive idea. The sad thing is that these ideas, crazy as they are, are repeated so often they soon appear to become normal or something acceptable. Media, uh, Medicare for all, the new Green Deal, health care free for illegals, ideas like that. Any way they can divide the nation and destroy America, they will try it. The latest tactic is the most dangerous scam of all. The defund the police gimmick strikes right into the heart of America. The thin blue line that separates our communities from lawlessness will be eliminated. I'm sure the mother who had a young son or daughter shot in Baltimore will appreciate that there is no one there to seek justice. The seniors who live in neighborhoods infested with drug dealers and gangs will miss the police presence. Everyone will feel safe when they call or dial 911 and a social worker shows up or when they dial 911 and no one answers. The Baltimore City Police are understaffed by about 300 officers. The $500 million budget for the police is really dedicated, $200 million of that budget is already mandated for retirement and health care. There are 350 murders and 750 gunshot victims in Baltimore City every year. Obviously, 
not the time to reduce public safety and create more victims. Baltimore City Police Commissioner Harrison said defunding the police is defunding progress. But the Radical City Council and the prospective mayor, Brendan Scott, in Baltimore, they did not pay any attention to their police commissioner. The politicians have already begun to defund the Baltimore City Police Department. The defunding is occurring at a time when the budget is already in trouble and busted from the virus. Johns Hopkins is caving in to the latest scheme by eliminating their new hard fought for private police force. Johns Hopkins fought hard in the General Assembly to get permission to have their own private police force because there was so much crime going on around their institutions and harming the people that worked for Johns Hopkins. This act of cowardice loses 100 police that would be on patrol in Baltimore neighborhoods around Hopkins and the people who work for this great institution. Johns Hopkins is dedicated to saving lives, but is now putting lives in danger to satisfy Black Lives Matter. The plane that flies over Baltimore City to keep track of bad guys is now being demonized and will surely be another victim of defunding, another win for the bad guys. The destroyer movement, the radical left, they oppose the rule of law. Throughout history, the socialist movement has always opposed the rule of law. That is why they attack the police and the border guards. And in the legislature and Congress support criminal rights. They do not want law and order safe streets or communities that are safe. They want chaos. They want to divide America. They have successfully disbanded the bail system in Maryland and in New York, where 1,800 protesters were arrested and were back out on the streets again the next day protesting. A bank robber in New York City robbed six banks in a row, and he was released after robbing six banks each time he robbed a bank. He was interviewed by the Wall Street Journal, and he said, I can't believe this stuff. Well, we can't believe it either, but it's reality. The city delegation to Annapolis are the biggest supporters of criminal rights in a city filled with people who are victims. The recent city elections are a bad omen for public safety and a hopeful event for criminals. Pelosi and Washington and the politicians in Annapolis are all now working to impose the defund police agenda. They're calling it a study. We know the outcome and the final results. Is there room for reform and better policing? Of course. But the media and left have once again not provided a balanced or honest picture. There should be more outreach to the community with the police, especially for young people. The radical left are not interested in real reform. The destroyers want to reduce public safety, increase crime, and divide America. We need to back the blue. We need to support our police. Super Citizen will defend America, and we will support our police because they are the thin line between safety and chaos. I'm Pat McDonough. I, I don't have, you know, I don't have a police detail because I don't want that outside of my apartment door every day. That doesn't make me feel safe. That doesn't make me feel secure. You know, of course, there are instances when we have our town halls, etc. you know, but I don't, I don't want to live my life that way. People ask me, what does a world where we defund the police, where, you know, defunding police looks like? I tell them it looks like a suburb politically the most important thing that the world revolves around is school funding. <laughs> it's like common sense. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just advocating for this stuff. But anyway, if I was a politician, I'm sitting there thinking, I'm working in the House of Representatives, I was like, you know what? I'm going to get rid of all the cops. <laughs> it's going to make everything better. 
You know what I was saying to myself, man? That is crazy. That's insane. What does a court system look without cops? I mean, if you're going to defund the cops, AOC, right? Let's say you do this. You defund the cops. Yeah. What the hell you need judges for? Ain't nobody getting arrested. Hey, why you there? Get rid of all the prisons. Yeah. You ain't got no judge. You ain't got no cops. <laughs> ain't nobody getting arrested. Ain't nobody to watch the inmates. You got to let them go. You think they're just going to walk around and take care of each other? A court system with no cops. Hell. Hey. hey. You get rid of all of them. Yeah. You got to get rid of the DMV. Yeah. You don't need the DMV no more. You don't need driver's license. You don't need registration. You don't have to worry about that. It's no more cops. <laughs> That's the only reason why I have a driver's license and registration. <laughs> because if I get pulled over by the cops, if you don't have that, you're going to jail. You know what AOC? I think this is a good idea. You're going to save me all kinds of money. <laughs> hey, AOC, have you ever thought about the fines that your city, the revenue, they would lose from fines if you got rid of all the cops? Have you ever thought about that? Let's concentrate on the most important thing. The crime. <laughs> Jiggy, think about the crime rates. <laughs> <laughs> think about it. There's crimes going unsolved. Rapes, murders. That's with the cops. So I see what she's saying now. Uh -huh. I get where she's coming from. Yeah. It's not the criminals. It's not the rapists. It's not the <laughs> robbers. It's not the pedophiles. It's, yeah. It's not the, it's not the criminals. Yeah. It's the cops instigating all this. <laughs> it's the cops' fault. AOC, you're supposed to be a woman. If you get rid of all the cops, who is that going to affect the most? It's going to affect women and children, the most vulnerable people of our society. Yeah. No cops? Are you kidding me? Yeah, y'all don't believe in the Second Amendment. Just If there's no law enforcement, yeah. if there's no law and order, yeah. you have anarchy <laughs> and mayhem. AOC, last time I checked, when I'm looking on TV at these rides, I don't see a bunch of men in blue ripping down statues, <laughs> burning down Wendy's, and pulling people out of that truck, beating them up just because they're white. <laughs> I see that from your ordinary citizens, not cops. I see it in your neighborhood from your constituents. But since when is the cops the bad guy? Because there's one bad cop, all cops are bad? No. You need to hold that cop, that person, you responsible. You don't hold a whole demographic or a group of people yeah, you, just because of one bad apple. Yeah, y'all want y'all preach tolerance and equality. Well, y'all don't even practice that. You judge each person yeah. individually. We're talking about defunding the cops because of a few bad cops. There's hundreds of thousands of cops in this country yeah. having good interactions with the public each mm. and every day. Millions, hundreds of millions of interactions throughout the year. And we got like a handful of situations. Now you want to get rid of AOC, this is the typical mindset of every liberal, every progressive nowadays. I don't even know why you call yourself liberal. You're they, not. They, you're leftist. You're crazy. <laughs> you... Just because something doesn't work or something goes wrong in a particular situation, you want to do away with everything. Yeah. Like, when are y'all going to start banning seatbelts? Because they always don't save your life. Yeah. You what... always don't get the right medication when you go to the pharmacy. People die that way. Yeah. You're yeah. assuming everything has to be perfect. That will never happen. Look, this is why this election is so important. <laughs> <laughs> Trump 2020. He had no idea what to expect. He was hoping to get 30 tractors. I talked to him a couple weeks after he said he had 80 to 150 tractors. Well, turns out there was 290 tractors in attendance today. And I want them to know, somebody's here standing up for Trump and the United States of America. In Sacramento, Marley Martinez, KCRA 3 News. Country! American! Americanism, not socialism! My parents grew up in a country where there was socialism. Thank <laughs> you.
Joe Biden also making their voices heard today with a parade down the strip and ending at the Trump International Hotel. Let's join Pat McDonough and Delegate Susan McComas for our roundtable. Thanks for coming by. Well, thank you for having me. I'm reading a great book right now, and I think every young person should take a look at this book. It's by Dinesh D'Souza, D'Souza uh, who's an Indian immigrant. He's an American. He's been here many years, and he's done, done a lot of great uh, television and movie documentaries. He's very patriotic. And the book is called The United States of Socialism. And he looks at the history of socialism in America and how they have infiltrated and taken control of so many things, uh, institutions in America, <clears throat> especially education. So uh, I know in the legislature over the years, the Republicans in particular have tried to introduce bills to teach history and civics and things like that, and they never seem to pass so that that could be part of the curriculum. Now, I know when I was growing up, and I'm sure when you were growing up, there was a lot of history, and honest history, uh, and civics that were taught, but it doesn't seem to be that way. Well, I know when I, when I was growing up, we used to get senior scholastic once a week, and I, I would read it cover to cover. Um, we had world history, and then we had, um, we had sociology, and um, we, we did have, um, there were a lot of, you know, there, there was, I remember it being in the ninth grade and we all went down to the, the uh, city mayor's office and watched a, a council meeting and study the different forms of, of, uh, of, of mayors, you know, and it was, and it, you know, council manic and the administrator mm -hmm. and council and the, the uh, mayor and council form of governments. So it was great. Um, I don't, I don't think kids really understand government and they don't understand the legislative, the judicial and the executive branches and that, that basically all they're, they're all equal to each other yeah. and one is not above the other. And uh, so that, that is a big problem. And so pe since people don't understand the basics, when you get into legislative issues, then it gets really complicated. And in fact, over the years, um, there's been less and less press covering the legislature. Uh, there's the, the folks that do cover the legislature are usually um, rookie reporters. Now we do have, Maryland does Pamela have a- Pamela Wood was just released, who was a person that covered the legislature for the Baltimore Sun. Let me ask you a question. Do you think best practices have been decreasing? I'll give you an example. Uh, did they on Main Street stand in the middle of the street? Well, the, the, that- That's the called civil disobedience. Well, but that, that Main Street is is regulated by the, the town police. That's a different entity. Well, I'm not sure if they did or not. They may have done it at one point in time. Well, I, I actually talked to the town town folks, and the, the deal was is that they realized people have a right to demonstrate, and I think that, that it was their consensus, um, we'll just close the road off and let them demonstrate. And it went, well, it went see, without a problem. Well, once again, that, that's civil well, disobedience. But that's a, but that's, that, that was the determination that of the town government. No, that's a given. And first of all, the town government is too small to deal with this kind of an issue. No, they, no, they, trust me, I called them up. 
Yeah, well, I, 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 you and I'm, I are going to disagree on this point. I'm good. Because, because they Joe had, Jones. They, but they had a backup if there yeah. was any well, problems. Well, I know they were in the background. But Joe Jones and Mary Jones and Bob Smith coming home from a hard day's work that have to traverse through downtown Bel Air at 4 or 5 o'clock in the evening couldn't do it because people were committing civil disobedience. If you want to well, protest, you have that right. No, I understand because I asked them, if do, because if it's in Annapolis, you have to have a permit. They don't require a permit for the town of Bel Air, which I kind of thought, but they handled it. They did a good job. And no, they, well, the people so, there were peaceful, okay? Right. And uh, they were also a very young group. Well, they're all young. Very young. That's very, because they've been brainwashed young. in college and high school and we pay for it. But the fact of the matter is, they were saying the other day something similar to what you're saying. They were saying in uh, Los Angeles that uh, this has been a good crowd, a decent crowd, but they blocked off the highway, backed up the people, inconvenienced people, maybe even ambulances or fire trucks. That's civil disobedience. You can't accept that. If you accept that, they have another uh, thing. That's part of acceleration. If you accept that, you'll accept the firebomb eventually. So you've got uh, to draw the line. No, no firebombs. That won't be acceptable. Trust me. I'm telling you, that's how they work. I mean, acceleration well. is based on civil disobedience, throwing the rock, then the firebomb. You have got to be clear that you're going to have the rule of law. The rule of law permits protesting. It's something we're very proud of because over the history of America, like with the civil rights, Martin Luther King marched with the American flag all the time in every protest. He didn't burn it, he marched with it. And in Memphis, the day before he was die, he died, when they had the protest in Memphis, there were young blacks that were gonna break windows and uh, you know cause problems. Martin Luther King got out of his bed, him and Jesse Jackson, and I forgot the other, went to that group and he told them personally, eyeball to eyeball, you will not do this. You will not desecrate this protest. This protest will be legal because you will take away all of the credibility and all of the support that we need for our cause. You will hurt our cause worse than a member of the Ku Klux Klan. So don't do it. See, now, where are those leaders today? Where are they? Well, I, I don't think you have. They were all very young that spoke, at, at least that I saw on the television. They're, they're a very young group. So. Well, I'll tell you what, I talked to the sheriff that day, all right, and here's what I told him. I said, where are they protesting? Right in the middle of downtown Bel Air, right? What is 15 feet away from where they are protesting? Courthouse, as well as his office. Not only that, the entire Main Street runs three or four or five blocks, well, it's all shops. But I will, but I will tell you something, um, the Bel Air uh, Downtown Alliance has wanted to shut off the street for their first Fridays. And both the chief of police and myself, I said, I didn't think it was a good idea because, the, you know, I, I, being in the street is great because uh, we did that yeah, once yeah, many years ago. Yeah, festivals and Right, like but the point is, is you can't, you cannot do it. But for, for that protest, it, it probably was okay because it, it basically removed some of the, 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 what do I want to say? In other words, there's a protest let, today. let some of the steam do You know off. there's a protest today in Hartford County? No, no, where are they happening? Because the sheriff was supposed to be here. He called me at the last oh, minute. Oh, so I'm the, so, I'm, I'm the substitute. No, 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 you were invited <laughs> also. The sheriff was coming to talk about the funding police today. Oh, he okay. could not become because there's a protest. So don't think it's over. Well, but it, 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 the point, the point, well, as long as it's not in Bel Air. President Trump can't do anything right. He's either reckless, he's too slow, he's a dictator, or why isn't he giving better directions? He's a racist, he's a xenophobe, but in reality, he's way ahead of the curve on things that I think have been the most important ways to address this pandemic. Let's look at what he has focused on. Open borders, bringing manufacturing back to America, addressing overregulation and top-down government, recognizing that socialism doesn't work. Open borders, according to uh, Mr. Biden, are, uh, they're a good thing. Um, he actually criticized the president for wanting to keep our borders closed to people who might be bringing in disease. He said that doesn't work. 
how about uh, President Trump and the travel ban? Here we had a Democrat Congress just at the same time with a bill to ban the president from being able to use a presidential travel ban. Well, when the pandemic hit, they realized maybe that wasn't such a good idea and it suddenly disappeared from the legislative calendar. But our president understood that while walls and travel bans are not gonna prevent a pandemic, they sure can slow it down. He recognized a long time before anyone was talking about uh, the fact that medical supplies and pharmaceuticals were coming from China, that we had a problem with the loss of manufacturing from this country. And he began to address it through tariffs and people said, well, that wasn't such a good idea. But what do we see today? We see China actually threatening to withhold medical supplies and pharmaceuticals. And so last week he announced that he's going to implement the, uh, using his presidential authority, the Made in America, Made in the USA Act. We don't know quite what it's gonna look like, but I think it's gonna help. And from probably the most significant thing is overregulation. He's gotten a lot of criticism that he hasn't acted fast enough to get testing kits around the country. But what has slowed him down? government. The CDC initially, back in January, was not allowing anyone, commercial or scientific laboratories, to develop testing kits. It had to be a CDD, CDC centralized test. And did you know that they were only administering it to people who had come from China or had been in direct contact with somebody with the disease? It wasn't until the end of February, and a lot of transmission had been able to happen in that period of time, that the CDC and the FDA began to let go of their stranglehold on the testing process. This problem was known during the swine flu, but they didn't do anything about it. And maybe that's why during the swine flu, we saw 14,000 Americans die because they didn't react fast. We saw Biden during uh, the debate saying that uh, he did such a great job. Well, hopefully because our president has been proactive quickly, we will not see a repeat. And if we all follow the, uh, the, the common sense instructions that we're being given, I have great faith that this is going to pass in the next month or two, we're going to see the numbers come down. So everybody listen, uh, do the things that are sensible, and don't panic. Help us out here at Super Citizen. You can visit our website, which is supercitizenusa.com, or that phone number underneath uh, all of us when we're talking, it's through the entire show. I'm Pat McDonough. Thank you for tuning in.